The most insane punishments used by Idi Amin. In the brutal regime of Idi Amin, fear was a constant presence. But even the most hardened prisoners couldn't prepare themselves for the horrific and twisted punishments inflicted by the Butcher of Uganda. From unthinkable forms of torture to public executions, the depths of Idi Amin's cruelty knew no bounds. Stay tuned to uncover the shocking and bone-chilling punishments that will make you question humanity itself. And let's get started. Tongue Cutting What would it be like to live in a society where saying what you really think could get you killed? This occurred during Idi Amin's cruel regime. To silence individuals who spoke out against his tyranny, the Butcher of Uganda would often sever their tongues as a terrible punishment. Picture this, a victim is bound and gagged, unable to protect themselves as one of Idi Amin's goons approaches with a knife. The blade glides between the victim's jaws, making a scraping sound as it moves. The victim's tongue is then cut out of their mouth with a fast practice move, leaving them writhing in pain and dripping blood. Yet, that's not the end of the agony. Those who made it through the ordeal usually had to endure excruciating pain for days, sometimes weeks, since the infected incision prevented them from eating, drinking, or even breathing normally. It was one of many heinous crimes performed by Idi Amin's administration and was meant to intimidate and silence critics. The very idea of such a penalty today is repulsive. It serves as a sobering reminder of how low human beings may sink when given complete control. This is a rallying cry to ensure that such horrors are never repeated. Beheading Beheading was one of the most heinous methods he used to punish those he considered enemies or dissenters. According to legend, Amin saw a man walking down the street wearing a shirt with an image of Amin's face on it one day. Amin, enraged by what he saw as disrespect and arrogance, ordered the man beheaded on the spot. Amin's preferred method of punishment was from then on, beheading. Under Amin's regime, the frequency of beheadings increased over time. Executions were frequently carried out in public to instill fear in the populace and demonstrate the consequences of opposing the government. The State Research Bureau, Amin's secret police, were notorious for their brutal tactics, and they frequently carried out the beheadings with blunt machetes, often taking multiple swings to sever the head from the body. Beheadings were carried out not only on political opponents or perceived enemies, but also on innocent civilians. There are stories of pregnant women, children, and even infants being beheaded under Amin's regime, often for no reason other than their ethnicity or perceived allegiance to a rival tribe or group. The use of beheading as a means of punishment was just one of the countless crimes committed under Amin's leadership. His regime was characterized by violence, corruption, and human rights abuses, and it is estimated that tens of thousands of people were killed during his eight years in power. The memory of Amin's harsh reign still haunts Uganda to this day and serves as a reminder of the consequences of uncontrolled authoritarianism and cruelty. Bludgeoning Amin would direct his soldiers and subordinates to beat them to death with blunt items such as clubs or metal rods. Amin used such heinous means of punishment for a variety of reasons. First and foremost, he desired to instill dread in his people and demonstrate that he was not to be trifled with. Amin was paranoid and saw adversaries everywhere, believing that the only way to keep control was via terror and bloodshed. Amin's minions would pick up suspected dissidents or anyone who had rebelled against the rule and transport them to detention centers, or they would be interrogated and tortured. Bludgeoning was a popular kind of torture since it was rapid and effective at breaking bones and inflicting internal injuries. Victims of Amin's bludgeoning penalties were frequently subjected to atrocities. They would be beaten for hours on end, resulting in bruises and lacerations all over their bodies. Many of the victims died as a result of their injuries, while others had severe disabilities or trauma. Feeding people to crocodiles. What? Feeding people to crocodiles? Yes. According to reports, the general despised beggars and disabled people. One typical incident was when they claimed to throw a party for people with impairments and street beggars one day. They had no idea if it was a trap to get them killed because Amin despised beggars and the crippled. And, as we all know, Uganda is famous for its carnivorous reptiles. Idi Amin allegedly dropped 4,000 crippled individuals into the Nile's crocodile-infested headwaters, Lake Victoria, in the 1970s. After feeding the Nile crocodiles with about 4,000 crippled individuals, these man-hunting crocodiles developed deadly tendencies. A torture chamber in an electrified moat the infamous prison and torture chamber that belonged to Amin was built in the 1970s in Israel by a crew that was under the impression that the structure was going to be utilized as an arsenal. The underground cement caves were never meant to house humans, rather they were designed to store gunpowder. 
The passageway leading into the chambers was energized, and the chambers themselves were encircled by a channel of electrically charged water. Each of the chambers was pitch black, reeked of feces, blood, and vomit, and contained hundreds of people at a time. Several victims died as a result of famine, and some prisoners opted to put an end to their agony and take their own lives by plunging into the electrified water. Prisoners would suffocate as oxygen ran out, as bodies piled up within the cells, and many victims died of starvation. Amputation Just for a second, put yourself in Uganda in the 1970s under Idi Amin's cruel rule. You know that dissenting against the government or simply being suspected of doing so might result in harsh repercussions, but even you could not have fathomed the depravity that Amin's administration was capable of. Amputation was a particularly gruesome kind of punishment used by Amin's security forces. Parts of the body were savagely cut off on purpose without anesthetics or other pain treatment. Imagine for a second the intense anguish of having a limb forcibly ripped from your body with no means of relieving it. It would be quite difficult to cope with the shock, the pain, and the knowledge of what's happening to you. Yet that's hardly the worst of the horror. The administration of Amin wasn't satisfied with only causing its victims physical harm. The goal was to send a message to the people and intimidate them into submission. Amputations were common, and the severed limbs were frequently put on public display as a deterrent. People's hearts would stop beating and their stomachs turn if they saw a human hand or foot lying on the ground after being severed by a harsh regime. Victims of amputation suffered not only from the physical pain of losing a limb, but also from the psychological trauma of witnessing others suffer the same fate. It's difficult to conceptualize the depths of government cruelty and sadism that would lead to the infliction of such atrocities on its own people. However, the reality remains that amputation was simply one of many horrific penalties meted out to anyone under suspicion of dissent or other offenses during Idi Amin's rule. Execution During the time that Amin was exercising his reign of terror, he believed that it was his responsibility to exact revenge on all of his rivals, even if those foes were wholly fictitious and he had no genuine reason to suspect any wrongdoing on their part. Amin would publicly execute, usually by firing squad, anyone he suspected of plotting against his dictatorship. He would even have the executions broadcast on television. Forced Cannibalism Although Idi Amin never provided an explanation for his practice of forced cannibalism, it's impossible to know for sure why he did so. Yet other explanations have been proposed for this awful behavior. Forced cannibalism is one of the theories put up to explain Idi Amin's rise to power and terror among the populace. His message was clear. I have the authority to do whatever I want to you, and if you cross me, this is what will happen to you. And he drove it home by making convicts watch as their fellow inmates were tortured, cooked, and eaten. Those who lived through Idi Amin's reign and testify to its horrors lend credence to the idea that cannibalism was practiced under his watch. That fits with the wider pattern of violence and intimidation that marked his administration. So these were some of the horrific punishments given by Idi Amin. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and do not forget to subscribe to our channel.